Davis, and uh, we're going to be hearing from him shortly. Uh, we want to pray first. Amen? Amen. How many know prayer changes things? Amen. Amen, it does. We have several requests. We want to remember Sister Barker is in the hospital and uh, is is very dire need of prayer. Sister Virginia did come through her surgery just fine. And uh, matter of fact, Sister Sandy texted me this evening and said she's talking to me and in no pain whatsoever. So thank the Lord for that. Amen. But we still need to pray for her. Sister Pam Henry needs prayer. Brother Dole and Sister Norman need prayer. Sister Eloise's family needs prayer. She lost her sister today. And then Brother Bernard McGuire needs prayer. I'm also going to ask you to help us pray for Brother Robertson's wife. They have been apart from one another for quite a while because of a sick granddaughter. And then in the meantime, his wife got COVID and she has really struggled. And he's not going to probably get to see her for another month or so. And everybody knows that ain't no good. Amen. Amen. So I told him we're going to pray for his wife. Amen. Amen. And God's going to strengthen her. And uh, uh, these are precious people. And uh, anytime a missionary comes here, they take part of our heart with them when they go. Amen. Amen. So we, uh, it's, it's a struggle at the very least. But we want to pray for their family. Does anyone have a prayer request over here on my right? Anybody? In this side, have a request of prayer you want to mention. Here in the middle section, Sister Margaret. All right, Sister Carol. All right, Mom. All right, let's remember Sister Fitzgerald as well. Brother David. All right. Brother Shannon. Sister Nadine. All right, Brother Ronnie. We'll still remember him. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Anybody else that we've missed up here on the platform? Mm-hmm. Right. We will. We will for sure. We will for sure. Anyone? Right. Uh, let's uh, remember our service tonight. Remember everyone that's unable to be here. Pray for our country. Pray for Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Always, always. Let's pray for our country, for our city. Pray for our state. Pray for revival. The Lord's pouring out His Spirit. We're excited about what God's doing. Let's take all these needs to the Lord together right now in the name of Jesus. We come to you, we believe in you, we trust in you, you've healed, you've delivered. There's no limit to what you can do. We know, God, the power of the Holy Ghost will minister as we pray the prayer of faith. God, we believe that you're going to heal sickness. We believe that you're going to fix homes and relationships. We believe, God, that COVID's got to go. We believe, Lord, you're going to give those that are struggling strength. We pray for Sister Robertson. We pray, God, for our request, Sister Barker, Sister Virginia, Sister Pam, Brother Dole, Sister Norma, Sister Eloise's family, Brother Brother Bernard, we pray for all of those others that are not able to be here. Sister Rochelle Riggs needs prayer tonight. I pray, God, that you will heal in every way. I pray for this service, Lord. It's for your kingdom. You deserve all glory. There is no flesh that can glory in your presence. We are your servants, Lord. We are your sheep, and we listen for your voice. Speak, Lord, to us tonight that our lives may be enriched. Let burdens fall. Let revelation be loosed. I pray, God, that, that you bless everything that's said or done here today and again let it all be done for your glory in the name of Jesus why don't we clap our hands to the Lord as we enter into worship with the praise team
we lift up some praise to the Lord in this house? Come on, really lift up some praise to him. Not some accompaniment to the music praise, but praise that comes from a heart that says, I've been delivered. It says, you deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. You deserve all the praise. You can lift up hallelujahs and glory and honor and praise to the one who deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. Praise the Lord. Please be seated if you'd like to this evening. We're going to receive our evening offering, and uh, we'll tell you that uh, the only difference is that we're going to, you bring your regular Wednesday night tithes and offerings and put them in the wood pans, and the special offering for our missionary goes in the gold-plated pans on the outside. So everybody remember, the wood pans are for your regular tithe and offerings. The gold pans are for our missionary tonight. Amen? amen. If you got it, say amen. 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 So good to see everyone here. We have guests that are with us. We will remind you that uh, Riverbend Kids and Riverbend Ignited uh, are going to stay out and enjoy the presentation of the missionary. And they want to get the burden too. Amen? Amen. amen. Uh, Brother Robertson, we don't make a secret about it that we're raising up some kids that are going to be missionaries someday. This church is going to launch out some missionaries to other countries. Amen. We're going to do it. Amen. And all the mamas said, not my baby. Not my baby. Be careful, Sister Callie. The Lord might send them both to East Outer Mongolia. Amen. Praise the Lord. I heard you. Amen. Don't we love our missionaries? Amen. We do. We love them. We love them. We long and look forward to when we're able to have a missionary with us. Uh, we're going to put the remind you that if you're watching online with us and you'd like to give to the missionary, just use Givelify and put mi uh, missionary in the memo, and we will see that it goes to him. Um, if you want to mail your offering in to uh, Post Office Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869, or you can use P PayPal from our website, riverbendpentecostals.com. And like Sister Heidi to put the prayer up for us, if she would. Amen. Pray this prayer with us. It works. Amen. Builds our faith. Builds our faith. I've testified to you all before. There are people that never darken a church door that support the, the kingdom of God, support the work of the Lord, and he blesses them for it. Amen. Amen. He promised he would. Let's pray together. Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Won't you bring your offerings forward? And as you do, come worshiping with the praise team.
While you remain standing, uh, uh, we are very honored to have Brother Robertson with us. Amen. He, uh, uh, the, the, the Holy Ghost is moving in the Philippines. Amen. Amen. And uh, our own sister, Iron, that's where she was born and raised. And I'm so glad she's able to be here tonight. And she don't run into many people that know where she hails from. Amen. And uh, Brother Robertson has been there before, and um, and we love Sister Iron, and she is a product of what the Holy Ghost is doing all over the world. Amen. Amen. And we are coming tonight. We expect to take on part of Brother Robertson's burden, and uh, I'll tell him right now we're going to take you on as a PIM. You don't have to. You don't have to uh, worry about that. And uh, we uh, uh, made a commitment to the Lord. That until he says stop, we're going to take on every missionary. And uh, the more missionaries we take on, the more the Lord blesses. us. Amen. And uh, you, all of it's his anyway. Oh, that's what the Bible says. You say, well, I worked for it. Rain on that. You don't do nothing without the Lord. Huh? Nothing without the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen. So we want Brother Robertson to come. I told him to take his liberty, and I mean that. I really do. I know some people say it, but they, they say it like tongue-in-cheek. But I'm the man that says, come on, brother. If you get them out of here less than 9 o'clock, they're going to be all grateful because you came here tonight. Amen. Come on, Brother Robertson, and share with us what the Lord has given you. Let's make Brother Robertson welcome. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. I can tell you that my wife is very nervous right now because she is the one that sits on the front row and watches the clock because I don't normally. And uh, it can be really bad. So I'm going to hit start right there, and I think you'll be safe. But if the Lord moves, that's on him, not me. Right. Praise the Lord. I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord today. I have come to the house of the Lord expecting to meet with God. Yes. Yes. I have come to be in His presence. And I have found that if I can be in the presence of the Lord, all of my problems have a way of fading and falling into oblivion. I am thankful that I can trust in the Lord. 
Amen. I am thankful that I can trust in the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. I am so thankful for the privilege of being here today, and I so deeply appreciate your vision and your passion for the work of the Lord around the globe. I am so happy to hear about the desire of your young people and your children for the work of the Lord. Um, this year, I turned 60. And I began my preaching ministry 42 years ago. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost this next July, 53 years ago. The first time that I can ever remember repenting of my sins was in an old theater building. And that was back in the days where they were really theaters, not this digital stuff. It was, it was back near the ark. Some of you will know about that. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how old I was. I, I might have been maybe three. But I remember kneeling down on the front row, tears streaming down my face, talking to Jesus. I, I remember one time praying. It was a little bit after that. Um, you know, when you're young, you experience a lot of new things. You're older, you say, well, I remember when. But when you're younger, it's everything's new. Well, I'd never seen hail before. And uh, we had some in West Texas. And I told my mama, I said, wow, next time it rains, I hope it does that again. <laughs> Bad news. Because this time around, they were about that big around. Right, right. And I think it was my cousin that said, Lord, if you don't make that stop, I'm going to come up there and whoop you. <laughs> Bad news number two. But everything's new when you're young. What better time than to introduce your children to the power and the demonstration of the Spirit of the Lord when they are a very early age. They don't need to experience all this mess that's going on in the world just to know that there is a God in heaven who is the greatest and the best thing that is going. Praise the Lord. I don't remember exactly when it was that I began to feel the call of God to missions. Uh, it was at an early age, nine or ten years old. I began to just know down inside that I, I'm, maybe I'm going to go somewhere else. And uh, my mom and dad were like, maybe some of you, no, I don't know about that. I don't know. Are you sure? No, probably not. No, you'll get over it. Well, they're still saying that. My mom's passed, but my dad... It becomes more difficult the older that they get, and you're in the Philippines, and they are in West Texas. And, but thank God for FaceTime and, and digital communications. I'm able to communicate with them almost every day, and I'm so very thankful for that. When the Lord began to talk to me about missions, I really had no desire. I had no idea where I was going to go. All I knew is that I had a conversation with the Lord one time, and I said, Lord, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm just telling you that I've got a strong back and a weak mind, and I'll just do whatever you want me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go, and I'll do my best to be whatever you will help me to be. But whatever it is, I want to live every day in your presence. And I have found that that has been my key to success. If you ever try to do anything for God by yourself, you're going to fall every time. It doesn't matter if you're cutting the grass or, or washing the neighbor's car or going to school or even just trying to have church. Have you ever done that one? We're trying to have us some church here. <laughs> 
And uh, that's the night when the pastor's the first one out of the door. <laughs> We're trying to have us some church here. No, no, no. We've done that a time or two. I, I want God to come. As a matter of fact, I want God to be here before I ever get here. I want to be in the presence of the Lord. I don't have time for any practice sessions. I have come expecting the demonstration of the presence of the Lord every time that I come into the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I thought I was going to be going to Russia. And my children were really small. And I thought it would be a good idea to get some advice from another missionary. And I thought that he was going to tell me all of these wonderful things about how to get ready and what to expect. And we have some really good places in mind. Oh, no, that's not how it worked at all. I began to talk about my vision and my burden and my desire. And uh, <clears throat> the first thing he said was, well, you already know you're in trouble when you get that well word. <laughs> well, well. You know, with your children as old as they are and, and the fact that you, you only have girls, but not that, you, you got yourself four girls. Global Missions is not even going to consider you. Oh, they're not going to look at my application. No, they're, you, you, you're really not what they're looking for as far as a, as a Global Missions uh, candidate. So I went with a mind just open before the Lord and, and I said, okay, God, if that's the direction you're giving me, then I'll just, I'll be happy and content just serving you. You just open the door and whatever door you open, I'll do my best to check it out. And so I began to just work in the, our home church. And uh, in the beginning, we were averaging about... Um, 85, 95, and within a two-year period, three-year period, our church grew from that number up over to 320. God began to move. People began to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We had three daughter works going at the same time, plus um, prison ministry in different locations throughout the penal complex. So God was beginning to move and things were going great and I thought I had found a home. I, I'm one of those crazy guys. I went into my pastor's office one day and I said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. And um, it's a kind of a unique deal. He was my father-in-law. And when we were going to talk about the kids and talking about fun things and just having a great time, we would talk at his house. But if it was ever serious and it was ministerial stuff or I was looking for advice, I made an appointment and I went to his office because I wasn't speaking to him on the terms of a son-in-law. I was talking to him in terms of my pastor. So I made the appointment and uh, I went into his office and, and it was odd. Praise the Lord, Brother Robertson. Come in and have a seat. So... I said, Pastor, this is going to sound strange, but I want to pastor your church. <laughs> Somehow his eyebrows got lost up in his hairline. And so I began to talk. That was my time because he was rather speechless. And I just began began to just pour my heart to him. His ministry was taking a change and he was becoming more involved in, in executive work and God was using him in a tremendous way. And uh, he, wasn't, he didn't have time to take care of all of the normal stuff that needed to be done around the church. And that's what I wanted to do. I'm not interested in board meetings. I'm not interested in finances and and I certainly wasn't interested in counseling. That's your stuff. But all this other stuff, I want to be involved. Praying for the sick, yeah. Going and contacting new converts, yeah. Encouraging the young people, yeah. 
Praying for those who are shut in. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Winning people to the Lord and teaching home Bible studies. That's what I'm interested. And he sat there and his, his, he must have found his eyebrows because they came back to life and came back home. And, and uh, I like it, he said. And so within a short period of time, we entered into a relationship where it was a pastor, senior pastor kind of thing. And all of a sudden, the Lord pulled the pen out from that. And we left there and we became pastor in a church about 700 miles north of the U.S. border. And uh, had a great move of God. I wish that we could say that we had a huge influx of new people, but we didn't. But God used a very interesting situation to prepare my wife and my family for working abroad. I didn't go to the Philippines immediately. I served in Tanzania, East Africa, and I served in Warsaw, Poland. I have seen just about every type of culture and cross-culture that you can imagine, and all of it has been in preparation for what the Lord was going to do with me when he took me to a place that I really didn't want to go. I had no plan of going to the Philippines. My vision, my passion, and my desire was to see a great harvest of souls in the country of Poland. Poland is a very difficult place. The, the spiritual climate is very dark and very cold. There is incredibly strong demonic activity. I could tell you stories that would keep you awake at night, but God has delivered us from all of those. One day my wife and I were doing a prayer walk around the neighborhood of our city and a man came out of the building and began to attack her, dragging her into the bushes. Lord only knows what he had in mind. But she began to call on the name of the Lord and uh, <clears throat> the guy just kept dragging her. And she finally got angry and she said, I bind you in the name of Jesus and I command you to let me go. The power of God came down and knocked that man to the ground. He got up off of the ground and he began to run away. I asked her later, I said, what did you do when he started running away? She said, I started running the other way. <laughs> she was very frightened. Can you imagine how you would feel? Thank God we have a God who knows exactly where we are every moment of every day. Praise the Lord. I remember another occasion when I was driving down the road in, in uh, central Tanzania. And uh, <clears throat> um, my youngest daughter, Kandra, was about to come home to continue her education. And she said, Dad, I want to go on a missions trip. And I thought, I thought we were doing that. <laughs> kind of like long term, you know. Like uh, we're living this. It's not a journey. It's a, it's a life thing. She said, no, no, no. I want just me and you to go do the, do the thing, you know. And I said, okay, let's go. And the Lord opened the door and we were going to teach uh, a seminar down in the southern part of the country. And we had to go through several wilderness areas, a national park. And, and it was going to be a great thing. We had been traveling about three hours and we were out in the middle of nowhere and I am approaching a blind curve toward the left and I am about as far as from here to the other side of the street and this car is coming my direction out of that curve on my side of the road and we're doing about 60 miles an hour each friend there is no time to scream Jesus have you ever tried that one out you, you were afraid or something, and you didn't even think about it. You just screamed that. My wife did that one time, and I asked her, I said, were you praying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no time for that. I just knew. I, there's no time for speech. It's here we are. I knew in my heart, we are going to heaven right now. This is our ride. There's, there's no time to pray. There's, and all of a sudden, I felt the car shake. And I heard a wind. And I was so astonished that the mirrors on the vehicles didn't even touch. 
and more so when I realized that the car is back there. And I continued on. I went and made the curve and came to a place where I could stop and gather myself. And I looked over at my daughter. I said, Ken, what do you think happened? She's crying and she said, Daddy, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure the Lord just sent an angel and pushed that car back over on its side of the road. There's no question that is exactly what happened. I believe that God was using somebody somewhere to pray for us because the angels of the Lord stepped in and intervened and kept us from a very dangerous, life-threatening situation. You know, I don't go looking for trouble spiritually, but I am smart enough and I have enough experience to know That every time that I get involved in doing the work of the Lord, the enemy will do whatever he can to try to stop me from accomplishing the desire of my heart when it comes to the work of the Lord. And I have learned that there is power in the name of Jesus and that I have authority over all of the power of the enemy. The enemy cannot stop you from doing what God has ordained you to do if you will not allow yourself to be distracted by the noise. There will be noise and there will be distraction, but you have authority over him through the power of the name of Jesus. You do not have to be 91 years old and neither do you have to be 75 or even 21. You can be seven years old and you can call on the name of the Lord and God will hear you every time you speak His name. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what language that you speak, whether that is Tagalog or Cebuano or any of the other tribal languages of the Philippines or or Swahili or or, uh, the other African languages or if it's just English that I cannot understand. God will always respond when you demonstrate faith. And so I have found that it is great comfort to be able to call on the Lord. We were preparing our hearts to return back to Poland. We had spent four difficult years having one struggle after another, believing that God was going to give us victory. And when I say struggle, I'm, not, I'm talking about cancer. I'm talking about physical problems. I'm talking about endometriosis in all of my children. I'm talking about very serious medical problems, lost my mom. And then to have all kinds of satanic activity and attack every time we try to do the work of God. But we believe that God is still on the throne and that greater is He that is in us than he that is in the world. We didn't understand what God was doing in our life, but we, was in, we were determined that regardless of what the circumstances were, we were still going to serve God and we were going to do the very best of our ability to, to do what God had called us to do. On a Friday afternoon, Brother Howe spoke to us and told us that somebody is going to approach us about an opportunity. Um, We had felt that we had heard the voice of the Lord, and uh, so we were not really surprised. A few minutes later, Brother Roger Buckland came to us and began to talk to us about the Philippines. And to be very honest with you, I really had no desire prior to go to the Philippines. But through the course of life and circumstantial changes, I was willing to do whatever God wanted me to do. You need to be careful when you begin to state your claims and state your vision. You need to preface your claim and your, and your passion according to the will of God. You can have a desire to do something But there is something about the timing of the Lord. You may have a a clear understanding of what God wants you to do, but it might not be the right time because God knows all things about everything and every situation. But when the opportunity came, 
we were positioned exactly where God wanted us to be. And when the door opened, we were willing to walk through the door. I can truthfully say that there is a great revival that is ongoing in the Philippine Islands. The United Pentecostal Church will celebrate its, I believe, 65th church anniversary in the islands of the Philippines. God is beginning to do and continuing to do an incredible thing. It started in a very unusual way. There was a family in, in the, the western Visayas area who had been looking for more of God than what their denominational church was providing for them. And a family member had been traveling abroad. And somebody gave them a track that was written by a man called G.T. Haywood. Ever heard of him? The track was entitled, The Oneness of God, The Infilling of the Holy Ghost, and Baptism in the Name of Jesus. And the brother said, huh, that's different. So he put it in his suitcase, went back to the Philippines, and presented it to his family. And they said, huh, we've never heard of this before. But we're going to pray. And if this is real, God will give this to us. So they began to pray and they began to fast and they began to have prayer meetings in their home. And in one of the home prayer meetings, one of the ladies began to raise her hand and began to speak in a language that nobody could understand. The presence of the Lord began to move in their home and their family. So they went to their pastor and said, Pastor, this is so amazing. You've got to see this. We've never experienced anything like this before. And so they presented him with the track. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. We don't do that here. We, we're, that doesn't happen anymore. That was in the book of Acts, but we, that, that doesn't happen anymore. Pastor, what are you saying? No, our, our, our group, we don't believe that's for us today. Well, sir, I'm, you're late. You're late. What do you mean I'm late? Well, mom, she already did this thing. <laughs> yes. He said, this, this thing? Yeah, yeah, you know when you pray and you don't understand what you're saying? They call it in the Bible speaking in tongues. He said, no, no, that's of the devil. Then why does it feel so good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And besides that, Mama, she already did it. And so we're not asking for permission to get that because we already got it. What we want you to do is baptize us like they did in the Bible. In the book of Acts chapter 2. We want you to baptize us in the name of Jesus. No, 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 I can't do that. So they did the next best thing. And they wrote a letter to Hazelwood, Missouri. Dear sirs, we have received information concerning this apostolic message. Baptism in the name of Jesus and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. This is a new message here in the Philippines and we wish that you would send someone to us. Because we want to know more about this and we want to share this with our friends and our family. To make a long story short, their pastor, he turned them out. You can't come here anymore. And... And in about nine months to a year later, Brother Carlos Grant moved his entire family to Western Visayas and began to start a United Pentecostal Church. That was the beginning of the United Pentecostal Church in the Philippines. I think it was the first week over 30 people received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In the first month, they baptized over 60 in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can tell you today that the apostolic movement is continuing to grow within the Philippine Islands and revival is continuing to burn throughout the land. 
Today, we have 1.35 million constituents who call the United Pentecostal Church their church home. And sister, I want to tell you that in, on the island of Mindanao, we have 936 UPC churches on Mindanao alone. And in the city of Davao, we have 86 churches, and God is continuing to move and to bless. Praise the Lord. I live in Davao City. It's the third largest city in the nation. And my primary responsibility is training young men and young women to be ready to be involved in the ministry that the Lord has called them to. Many of the people that come to us, many of the pastors, already speak English. So because of the work that I do, I don't, I don't go out into the mountain areas. So knowing their languages is not as important to me as if it were I was in other places. Most of our Bible school students come to us with already having four-year degrees. These are very highly qualified young men and young women who are passionate about serving the Lord and being involved in the work of God. I would like to speak to you for just a moment about Pastor Jeed. Pastor Jeed was one of our last graduating class graduates. <clears throat> Pastor Jeed, he was kind of a joker. He sat on the back row, and half the time you didn't know if he was paying attention. You didn't know what he was going to do. You just had no idea. But he was always there. He never missed. He might have been late a few times, but he was faithful to his class. He worked hard. He studied. He was not an excellent student, but he had a love for God. Friend, I don't know what your excuse is, but God can use you. I don't know what your circumstances are, but God's got a place for you. Hello, anybody home? Hello? God's got your number. And he's waiting for you to wake up and answer the phone. I'm calling you. I've got something in mind for you. You know, we go to the scripture and say, well, praise the Lord. We're going to shout and dance and hallelujah because we ain't no rock going to take my place. But when God wants us to get out of our pew and go do something for him, I'm tired. You go on and talk to brother so-and-so. He's already listening. If my, my, my wife was here, I'd tell her, go out and get that car started because we're going to have to leave here quick. <laughs> no, no, no. There's going to be a time when there's not going to be room for excuses. There are people that we call in false doctrine who are passionately hungry for God. Are you? Are you? Well, no, 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 missionary, that's over. I, I done got the deal. Maybe, maybe you do, maybe you don't. If you do, why are you still sitting there? Nobody, I know nobody here. Me and the pastor, we didn't have a little talk. No, I never saw this brother ever before. So I don't know you. I, I, all I know is I'm just saying what I feel led to say. You may have every reason why you're not qualified. But so did Moses. What, 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 well, well. I ain't got good English. Somebody asked a missionary one time where he was going. 
He said, oh, I'm going to this country. He said, I speak English? <laughs> no. <laughs> Agner, ain't they? <laughs> they only speak six or seven other African languages, you know. Yeah. Agner, ain't they? I don't know what your deal is about why you feel like you're not qualified. But you wouldn't be having this tug of war with God if he thought you was not qualified. And if you're not careful, he's going to turn you off and take your treasure and give it to someone else. How do you feel the day after you see somebody just got your anointing? You woke up to the fact that old brother so-and-so, he's walking down the street under my anointing. Whoa, Jesus, we need to have us a talk. I'll catch you later. I'm busy right now. No, I don't ever want to get to the place that I am so full of the presence of God that I haven't got time for more. We're all worried about COVID. We're all disturbed and tore up, wondering when things are not, or when things are going to start going back to normal. Do you ever figure out that maybe the Lord doesn't want us going back to normal? Maybe He wants to stir the pot so much that the entire world is petrified because they don't know what's coming next and if the church doesn't start being more about what we're called to be they will have nowhere to look but when troubles and storms come where do I go when there's no one else to lean on who do I talk to I go to the rock of my salvation. Yeah. When the troubles come and when the storms arise, I go down on my knees and say, Jesus, I don't know what this one is about, but I know that you are the master of the storm. You are my way maker. You are on the throne. And I call upon you to take charge and authority over my situation. You know what the Lord is doing in that scenario? He is beautifying the church. And He is making us attractive to those who are on the troubled seas. How come you're not having a problem over there? Oh, there's plenty of problems, but I've got my Lord who's piloting the ship. I'm not worried because I know who is in control. I'm serving my almighty God. And friend, we need to understand that this is our time. We have got to understand that this may never happen again. And if we don't seize the day and take advantage of the opportunities that come by, God just might choose someone else. Have you, I don't know if it happens here in New Madrid, but I know statistically across the United States, many churches, their pews are becoming very, very empty. How would you like to be one of the founding saints of one of those congregations? Well, this family, they, their job took them somewhere else. And, and this family here, they said, well, we're tired of coming to church on Sunday and falling asleep, so we're going to go over there and and now it's just us and we don't hardly... How'd you like to be a member of that? Uh -uh. No. Well, I guess it's time to go home. <laughs> no. Lord, if I need to be awakened at 3 o'clock every morning, if that's what it's going to take... Like this old fellow said one time, he said, 
That's what it takes to get me under that spout where that glory comes out. Huh. That's what I want. Always lived and practiced what I believed in my home. Because I didn't want to be a mom and a dad who were serving God and my kids were outside, Lord, doing who knows what. So when it came prayer time and fasting time, you're with me. When it was time to pray, preach service, you're with me. And little girls would hold my little finger. and We would walk in the prayer room. And they were praying. My three-year-old granddaughter received the baptism of the Holy Ghost when she was three years old. She didn't know it. She didn't know it. But I have a video where my daughter is kneeling down at the front of the church. And my little Millie goes over and lays hands upon her and crying. Puts her hand on her mama and begins to say, Jesus, my mama. And then fades off. And she's speaking in a heavenly language. She's a little embarrassed. She doesn't want me seeing her doing it. But I got it on video. I want to tell you, don't ever push them away. Bring them in. It got to the place that when I needed people who were I knew were prayer warriors, I, I, I went to my children. I, I got a problem. No, I couldn't tell them all of the details. I didn't tell them all of the circumstances. They knew more about what was going on in the church than I did sometimes. But I, we got a problem. We need God to intercede. So when Milton came to the office and said, Pastor, I've got cancer. I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, well, I don't know too much about cancer, but I know how to pray. And we would go to the Lord and we prayed. And the next week, Milton came back and said, Pastor, maybe the doctor says he made a mistake, but they can't find cancer anywhere. I want to know, tell you what happened. The Lord reached down and God took away the cancer. He came back a few months later and said, Oh, Pastor, I don't know what I'm going to do. They said the cancer's come back. Well, we'll try again. And we knelt down and we began to pray. And he's coming back dancing, Pastor. They're going crazy down there at the hospital because they can't find the cancer anywhere. I want to tell you that when you call on the name of the Lord, something is about to happen. Don't you think it's time that we begin as apostolics to give this devil a good old nightmare? When we begin to call on the name of the Lord Jesus. For the name of the Lord is a strong and mighty tower that the righteous run into and are safe. I want to tell you that there is a name above every name. Where at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is our day and this is our time. If anybody is going to have apostolic revival and an apostolic move of the Holy Ghost in New Madrid, it might as well be you. It might as well fall at your house. If there's a demonstration of the Spirit of God, it might as well happen at your workplace, at your schoolhouse, in your home, in your neighborhood, in your family. It might as well be you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everywhere I've been, I have passed church after church after church. And you see them coming at their appointed times. And I can't help but feel compassion in my heart. And I began to pray, God, make them hungry. God, make them hungry. Help them to be so hungry that they're willing to lay aside their traditions. And friend in Pentecost, we got us some traditions too that we are pretty fond of. We need to be careful with that. Hello? 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 I was raised in this. I've been in this all my life. If anybody knows what they're talking about, I've seen it. We need to be careful with that. We need to go back and get a new dose of the Holy Ghost. Are we so spiritually insane to think that we are the only people in New Madrid who are hungry for God? There's people in your community who are starving to death. 
but they've been fed so much junk. We have a place in Manila. It's called Trash Mountain. And it's a horrible place. It's a landfill. But people live on top of the landfill. And they're rubbaging through the garbage looking for something to eat. Friend, when you're hungry enough, even garbage looks good. And that is the problem with the people in the world today. They are so spiritually starved that even garbage is appealing to them. Something has got to happen to apostolics that says, No, sir, not on my watch. You deserve a T-bone. You deserve all of the fixings. You deserve something nutritional and something that is healthy. We've got to get beyond and past the smells that are permeating our spiritual and our political climates around the world and step into the regions of the unknown. Because if we won't, who will? And if we don't, who else? Will God turn to? I have made up my mind. I want more of God. I'm, I'm hungry. When you have Trinitarian singers who are singing songs that are so incredibly anointed, and they're talking about hunger. The Lord is my shepherd. More of you. The goodness of God. I, can I be plain, Pastor? I, I'm, I'm struggling with this because we got a bunch of apostolics that they want to talk about breaking chains and, and breaking. This is how I'm fighting my battles. Well, the last I heard, I read the book, and the battle belongs to the Lord. I, I, I'm just kind of simple in that way, but the battle's not mine. It's not mine. So does Satan really care how I fight my battles? No, he doesn't care. But he's going to do whatever he can to stop you from exalting. I need the glory of the Lord. Send your glory down. I want to be with you. That's where I'm at right now. I want to be in the presence of the Lord. When I'm driving down the road, I want to be in the presence of the Lord. I don't care if the popo calls me over and says, Buddy, are you under the influence? And I'm going to say, Oh, don't you want to know? Don't you want to know? <laughs> oh, my. I'm in love with Jesus. I am so in love with Jesus. I, I want you to love Jesus like he deserves to be loved. I want to tell you what I really believe. I believe that God has positioned people in strategic places and, in, and is providing them with unprecedented moves of his spirit. So that they would become an attraction to those who are truly hungry. And they will have an example to follow. I was in a church recently in Florida. And I shared this with the pastor. And he said, what? I said, yeah. I, I believe that God is going to select even churches. That their influence is not going to be neighborhood and citywide, but they're going to become regional. Not because they are, they've got a good program. Not because of their, their facilities and the lights and the sound and the music. No, no. It's going to be because that God is moving in an unprecedented way. And people are going to become attracted to the move of the Holy Ghost and they're going to come and they're going to investigate what is going on there 
And they're going to try to find out how we can get this at home. He started laughing. And I thought, Bo, I'm serious. He said... He's here in the house right now. Do you feel what I feel? He's come because he's heard. And he's come to investigate. Later, this pastor said, he said, I've been to every major church in your area. And none of them have what you have. None of them are having a move of the Holy Ghost. Friend, I want to tell you, it's our time. It's our time. It's our time. It's our time. You are the people of God. It might as well happen here. It won't happen by accident. It won't happen because of just run of the mill, normal Happy go lucky, well if I do and well if I don't. No, no, no. They that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. God, if you're going to use anybody, I want you to know I'm in line. I'm in line. I'm in line. If you're going to wake anybody up in this church in the middle of the night because you've got a deal that you need to talk to them about, I want you to know I'm ready. I'm ready. You, you, you speak to me. I've got all of my other calls on hold. I'm listening for a certain sound. I'm listening to the voice of the Lord. Come here, I want to pull you aside. I've got something I want to share with you. Oh. I was a young man. I had not been in the ministry very long. And we had a lady come to church. Her, her co-worker son had been involved in a head-on collision. And they didn't expect him to live. And he was comatose in a vegetative state in the Royal Canadian Hospital in Vancouver, British Columbia. Pastor, can we pray for this young man? His name is Matt, and it's really bad. And the Lord spoke to me and said, go pray for him. <laughs> what? Do you have the wrong number? The pastor, he's over there. Go pray for him. I was barely local licensed. In British Columbia, that's just the start. That doesn't mean that you're ready to pastor. That means you're just getting going. And, uh, okay. So, that was on Sunday. Monday, I fasted. Tuesday, I fasted. Wednesday, I fasted. I wasn't fasting because I was expecting God to pull the proverbial rabbit out of the hat that wasn't the reason why I was fasting I was fasting because I didn't want there to be some secret part of me that would stop and hinder God from doing what God wanted to do so about 10 o'clock in the morning I put my best suit on. I drove into that hospital, found the waiting room of the intensive care ward, found the family, introduced myself. Ma'am, I'm here to pray for Matt. Dorothy told us about the tragedy, and I'm here to pray. Is it okay? Tears began to flow down her face. Please come. We walked into the intensive care ward and pretty sure I met the devil's sister. (laughs) 
You're here to hoa. Yes, ma'am, he's here to pray. I'm kidding you not. She rolled her eyes and snorted at me and stood there <laughs> daring me to pray. I thought maybe this, this lady would take a breath and step back a little bit. She stood right at the foot of that bed. Well, then I got mad. I didn't say that to her, but I just smiled. But in my heart, I said, you dumb devil. If you think that I'm going to be intimidated at your daring me to pray, then I dare you to stand right there and listen to me pray. Brother, I'm telling you, they had tubes and wires and mess everywhere. I, I'm, I'm very serious. His head was as big as a basketball. Huge. I was traumatized by what I saw. I was not expecting that. So I found a spot and, Lord, this is bad. But you're good. And you've sent me here to pray for Matt. And I don't know everything that's wrong with him. But I know you're bigger than all of his problems. And I just want you to heal his body. Whatever's wrong, you fix it. In the name of the Lord. And I praise you right now. For your promises are yea and amen. amen. And I trust in you. In Jesus' name, I left. I washed my hands, walked out. The lady went about her business. They said Matt would never wake up. But he did. Oh, I need to back up. I walked out of the hospital, got into my car. <laughs> it was an old beat-up Mercury Marquis. I thought it was a Cadillac. And then the devil started laughing at me. <laughs> I could hear it. <laughs> Did you really think that something was going to happen? Were you expecting <laughs> Were you expecting him to get up out of bed? Oh, That's what I heard. Oh, that made me so mad. <clears throat> if there would have been people around my car heard what was going on, they would have said, we need to admit this guy. He's having some kind of a deal going on. We got rooms upstairs for him. Yeah, there's obviously some, tra some trauma going on. I said, shut up, devil. I've listened to you long enough. You've got your story messed up because you apparently think that I'm some kind of a miracle worker. Well, I have come to let you know I'm not. I've never healed a person a day in my life. I wouldn't even know where to start. I don't know hardly anything about anatomy. Or any of his brothers. But there's one thing for sure that I know quite a bit about. And that's how to talk to my Jesus. And we had us a little talk the other day. He suggested that I come on down here and have a little talk with Matt. That's right. yeah. So you need to pack up your mess and get on out of here because me and Jesus done had our little talk and now he's about to go to work. Yeah. How many times have you been cheated out of a miracle because Satan, you've listened to Satan tell you, you can't heal anybody. Nothing's going to happen when you pray. Get out of here and shut up. I'm not in the healing business, God is. I'm not in the problem-solving business, God is. I'm not in the way-making business, but Jesus is. Yeah. That's the kind of God I serve. And he said, when you call on my name, I will hear and I will answer.
You said that. We make this deal too complicated and it's really easy. We get all messed up and confused with whichever voice we're supposed to be listening to. And sometimes you just need to tell the devil, shut up and get on out of here. Yeah, but you don't know where, where you're, you look at all your past. You want to talk about my past? Well, let's talk about your future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I turned that car on, da, 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 got it going. <laughs> Drove on out of there, buddy. I mean to tell you, I went to town. No, oh, Matt, he's not going to go home. He's not going to wake up. He did. If he wakes up, he's probably just going to be a vegetable. He won't be able to talk, he won't be able to walk. He's going to be in all kinds of trouble, but he wasn't. He woke up. First thing he said was, where's mom? I want my mom. No, no, don't get in too big of a hurry there, Matt. Take it easy. Nope, I'm out of here. No, you can't walk. Watch me. Well, you, you, you probably won't last too long. Probably go into nursing home. No. Everything the doctor said would happen did not happen. Because there was a little young preacher that was willing to get out of his comfort zone and go and just follow simple obedience. Just simple obedience. The Lord never told me to go down there and heal that boy. He told me to go down there and pray. That's pretty simple. And I did. And because I did, God did. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, my soul cries out. The Philippine Islands is going to have the greatest revival that the world has ever seen. Their vision is a million souls every five years. And we're already pushing a million and a half. I want you to be in prayer for us with our Bible school in Davao. We have a two-year program, but there are some changes that are coming in our curriculum. That will make it possible for us to transition from a two-year program up to a three and possibly a four-year program. This will enable us to train young ministers, young pastors, to not just be better equipped for their ministry, but also provide them with a platform and a footing for which we can send them out to be fully equipped fully fledged missionaries supported by the Philippine Islands around the globe. We already have about a hundred people who they call missionaries, but we are doing our best to equip these people to go into areas where we cannot go. And so I want you to pray that God will provide and supply. And there are over. Don't think for a moment that we are small and we are isolated. But we're not as big as what it's going to be. The scripture says 
that there is going to be a crowd in front of the throne that no man can count. Yeah. I'm going. I'm going to be there. And when you want to find me, go look for the Filipinos because that's where I'm going to be. Amen. Don't you want to be used by God? Don't you want God to use you and anoint you? Then start now. Just start now. You say, well, it's not very big. It doesn't matter. Big is relative. It's relative. Just be used by God right now. Just be used by God right now. My daughter, Shivana, was ministering in the children's church in her local church. And she was teaching the children how to pray. I'm talking four, five, six, seven-year-old children. And there was a little boy who had a problem and had to have surgery. And he came back to church with a cast. And the little guys, they said, we want to pray for our friend. So they laid hands upon him and anointed him with oil. And those children, four, five, six, and seven years of age, prayed for the little boy. The power of the Lord came down in children's church. After service, the little guy said, Mom, I'm taking this cast off. Jesus touched me. I'm healed. I want to take it off. She said, well, wait, wait just a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Don't you think that if Jesus healed you today, that you will still be healed tomorrow? Yeah, he's, my, he's that kind of God. And if you're healed today, don't you think that he'll be, you'll still be healed on Thursday? Yeah, yeah. Well, your doctor's appointment is on Thursday. Why don't we just leave the cast on until Thursday and let we'll hear the doctor have to say about it. Okay. He marched into that doctor's office. He said, take this thing off. Jesus, heal me. Oh. Oh. Okay. They took the whole saw out and they ground that thing off. They went over and took a, an x-ray. Well, buddy, it looks like you're right. What about your home? What about your children? What about your circumstance? What about your problems? Maybe Jesus has tailor-made you a set of problems to provide you with your own miracle. And you just haven't received the miracle yet because you have failed to ask. I think I'm overdue for the house. See you later. I think we need to thank the Lord for what he said to us tonight. Come on, let's stand up on our feet and thank the Lord that he sent Brother Robertson by here to put a bow in on a fully wrapped package of a gift that God's given us Thank you, Jesus. 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 I cross my heart and hope to die with a thousand needles in my eyes. Have you watched any of our services on the Internet? Yeah, he got lost at New Madrid tonight, by the way. But he, but he wasn't lost in the Word. My goodness gracious. I hope those of you that was just sitting there was sitting there because you were speechless at how powerful that uh, the Word went forth. Because we've taught about being hungry. We've taught about being too full. He said that. Did y'all hear that? We've talked about being hungry. We've talked about a regional church. I just told Brother Ronnie that yesterday morning. Yesterday morning, I said, my vision is for a church that affects this whole region. 
and then you get up and say that right there. Brother, I didn't tell you that. Matter of fact, we talked six minutes. I looked it up. Our, first, our conversation was six minutes long, and the rest of it was a text message about where his hotel was. And God sent Brother Robertson by here by way of Tanzania, and I've been there, by the way, by Warsaw, West Texas, Florida, Canada, and the Philippines to validate his word. The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I'm just going to challenge you. I have the only thing you said tonight, brother, that I haven't preached. And God sent him to say it. Don't you dilly-dally around too long. Or he'll take it and give it to somebody who will do it. The reason is the Lord don't have time to keep playing games. Now, last night, the last two days, Sister Virginia has talked in tongues for two and a half hours solid in her, whole, in her hospital room. And she called them around her bed last night and said, God gave me a word to give you. And she said, the word is you better start spreading the gospel to your family because the trumpet's fixing to sound and we're fixing to go home. And she got into arguments with some of them because she said, I got a word from the Lord. And brother, the Lord is positioning us. I'm going to go back and watch some of what you said because I just almost can't believe it. I'm telling you the truth. The things that God's been saying to this church, you just wrapped it all up in one word. We just need to thank the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that our little church in our little town, Lord, you care enough to speak to us such powerful words of truth in Jesus' name. I'll get this filled out for you. Um, the Robertson have some projects. Now, let me tell you, here's how I look at this. First off, you said y'all going to have the greatest revival in the world. Well, I, I'm hoping it's the second greatest. I'm believing it's the second greatest because I think we want to have the greatest. And we do have every intention of every revival in the world having the River Bend Pentecost fingerprints on it somehow. We, we want that. We want that. And when a million people every five years are filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the Philippines, we're going to be part of the reason why. Amen? Amen? I'm going to lay this. I'm going to lay this here on the edge of this piano. It's some projects that they have going. If you want to come by and just take a look at it, and at any time that you want to give, uh, we'll, we'll pass it along. We're going to fill out the par partners in missions and take on the Robertsons for $50 a month. And uh, that ain't much, folks. That's $600 a year. But we're going to keep on and keep on. We have raised our monthly partners in missions from $200 to over $800 in the last nine years. Every month. Every month. And God's going to keep blessing. Praise the Lord. Two hundred forty. Four. We're responsible for four people being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the world every month. Yes. 
times 12. Now we can brag on ourselves or we can say, let's get big. Let's get bigger. We got something we can reach for now. Amen. Brother, throughout the pandemic, our church's treasury has more in it today than it's ever had in the history of, the tre of, the, of this church, which was founded in 1931. It's a 90-year-old assembly, and today we have more money in our treasury than we have ever had in the history of this church, and it's all happened during the pandemic. Amen. Every bit of it's happened. But I told you when you elected me pastor, we ain't going to pile it up and get rich on it. God gives it to us, Brother David, so we can be a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. We're not going to hoard it up. Ain't that right, Brother Jerry? We're not going to hoard it up. Matter of fact, we're just conduits. The Lord blesses us to be a blessing. I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this house tonight, folks. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost moving in here. He ministered in this place tonight. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, Elements class, Riverbend Ignited, Riverbend Kids, and uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock, we're going to have some throwdown church. It is Pentecost Sunday. It's a celebration of the anniversary of the Holy Ghost being poured out on the day of Pentecost. How about we come expecting God to fill somebody with the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Amen. 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 Brother Robertson has a display out in the front. I, I encourage you to take a look at that. Make sure you shake his hand. Tell him how much you appreciate it. But don't fail to thank the Lord for sending Brother Robertson by here. Amen. He, you, you were in the Holy Ghost. God sent you here. Let me tell you this real quickly. I tried to get out of having Brother Robertson. <laughs> Brother Mangus called and said, can you have him May the 16th on Sunday? I said, nope, can't do it. I already got stuff done. Already can't, can't do it on Sunday. Then he texts me back, well, can you have him on the 19th? And I thought, you can see my text message. I told him, sign him up. We'll have it. Because God was saying, Jim Robertson needs to speak to my church at New Madrid. Thank you. you th th I'm not blowing smoke at you. This was the Holy Ghost, brother. Take this word and go with you. We love you. God bless you. You're dismissed.